For the blanket chest, I used inch and a half thick quarter sawn African mahogany. And I begin by milling up the lumber to 7 eighths of an inch thick using the joiner and the planer. I then took the boards over to the table saw to give me nice parallel edges. After getting the boards cut to size, I glue up the panels for the front, sides, and back of the blanket chest. When gluing up the panels, I like to orient the grain so that the glue lines disappear once it's dried. You want your panels to look like one big board instead of two boards glued together. And after the glue dried, I used the table saw to cut the panels to their final width. For the length, I used a cross cut sled and a stop block to make sure that the side pieces are the same exact length. And for the front and back panels, I just readjust the stop block and then cut those to length as well. Before cutting the dovetails, I like to go ahead and sand with the aggressive grits of 80 and 120 grit just using my random orbit sander. I like to cut the dovetails first, so I'm using my marking gauge and marking four sides of the tail boards. To lay out the tails, I'm using two sets of dividers and this first set is set to three quarters of an inch to mark the half pin. And then using the second set of dividers, I mark out the rest of the tails. Using a dovetail marker, I lay out the lines of the dovetails to use as a reference for cutting the dovetails. And before cutting, it's always a good idea to mark your waist so you know what you need to remove and what needs to stay. And now I begin cutting the tails and I like to use a Japanese pull saw when I cut dovetails. I keep the saw straight across the end grain and angle it to the angle of the dovetails. And to remove the waist, I like to use my bow saw. And when I remove the waist, I keep about an eighth of an inch of waist above the scribe line that I can then chisel away later. When chiseling the waist, I like to remove the majority of the waist in front of the scribe line and with about a sixteenth of waist left, I like to then put the chisel in the scribe line and remove the waist. I like to chisel down about halfway, flip the board over, and then remove the rest. To transfer the tails to the pin board, I use my marking knife to scribe a line around the tails. Since I'm cutting the pins, I scribe a line on two faces using my marking gauge. When cutting the pins, I angle the saw on the end grain and begin cutting. I like to leave the waistline when cutting the dovetails that I then remove later just using a chisel. And then it's back to the bow saw to remove the waste between the pins. Now chiseling away the waste on the pin board is a little different. The walls are at the angle of the dovetails, so I angle my chisel when removing the waste. And like before, I chisel half the thickness of the board, flip it over, and remove the rest. Next, I route a three quarter inch groove for the plywood bottom. Since the groove is a quarter inch deep, I route it in two passes. Now that we have the dimensions of what we need to make the bottom panel, I take it over to the table saw and cut the width first. Since this is a fairly large panel, I'm using my crosscut sled to cut it to length. Next up, I sand the surface with 220 grit with my orbital sander to prep it for finish. Before gluing up the chest, it's easier now that I have access to pre-finish the insides. So I brushed on three coats of a two pound cut shellac. So after the shellac dried, I used 40 steel wool and wax to buff it to a satin sheen and to remove any dust nibs. And after about 10 or 15 minutes, I used a cotton cloth to remove the excess wax. So we're probably at the most stressful part of this project, so I've gone ahead and done a mock glue up just to make sure that there's not going to be any surprises. To begin, I apply the glue to the pins and the sockets. It's important to note that I made sure that all surfaces of the pins and the sockets received the glue. Now I can put the board in place and move on to the other pin board. Again, just like before, I apply the glue on the pins and the sockets, making sure, once again, to get glue on all of the faces. And now I'm going to install the bottom panel, and it's important to make sure that the better looking face is facing up so that you see it every time that you open the blanket chest. With the side and the bottom panel seated, I can now focus on putting glue on the other pins. And the final panel to put into place was the tailboard. Just like before, I used the call and the rubber mount to bring everything together. The glue was drying and everything was swelling just a little bit, but a few taps and everything was good to go. And I let this set for about four hours before removing the clamps. The pins and tails were a little proud, so I used my jack plane to remove the excess material. Moving on to the lid, I begin by routing a stopped mortise in the breadboard ends using a 3 8 inch bit at the router table. 
To cut the tenon on the lid, I used my 3 quarter inch dado stack and the table saw. I cut one side, flipped the lid over, and then cut the other side of the tenon. Next, I marked for the three full tenons and the two stub tenons. When removing the waste for the tenon, I stay about an eighth of an inch above the shoulder of the tenon. In cutting the stub tenons, I just follow the line all the way down. To remove the waste, I again switch back over to using the bow saw. Next, I put the breadboard ends back on the lid and marked for the three tenons. And to remove the waste, I head back over to the router table to do the plunge cuts. Since this mortise is an inch and a quarter deep, I ended up making this in five passes, raising the bit a quarter inch at a time. Using a combination square, I next mark the breadboard ends for the drawboard pins. And then it's off to the drill press to drill the 3 8 of an inch holes using a brad point bit. I wanted to mention that I'm using a sacrificial board under the breadboard ends to prevent any tear out. I then used the same 3 8 inch bit to drill the holes in the tenons for the drawboard pins. I made sure to elongate the outer holes so the lid can expand and contract with seasonal changes. And then using a steel plate, I made some African blackwood dowels. When it came time to gluing this together, you only want to put glue on the center tenon so this panel can still expand and contract. And then I put glue on the center dowel to hold it into place. And on the two outside dowels, I only put glue on the top eighth inch of the dowel that goes inside of the breadboard but does not touch the tenon so it doesn't lock it into place. After about 30 minutes, I used a flush trim saw to remove the waste. Using my marking knife, I marked some reference marks for the installation of the hinges. These are the Horton Brasses PB409 antique hinges and I used two for the blanket chest. So for this operation, I'm using my trim router and a quarter inch spiral bit. And I raised the height of the bit to the center of the barrel on the hinge. I clamped a two inch wide sacrificial piece of wood to the side of the chest to support the router base. Then I transferred the hinge location to the lid and removed the waste using the same router settings. When routing out material like this, it's important to stay about an eighth of an inch away from your line. Next, I switched over to using my chisel and removed the waste. Since there was very little waste, I just stuck the chisel in the scrap line and removed it. Now I can install the lid supports. I begin by making a couple of reference marks to pre-drill for the screws. After installing the first screw, I use my combination square to make sure that the lid support is square and then install the second screw. And then after a couple of measurements, I install the top two screws of the lid support. So moving on to the feet, I begin by marking the start and the stop lines for the mortises. To cut the mortises, I'm using a quarter inch bit in my hollow chisel mortiser and I have the fence set back about a half of an inch. Next, using a template, I mark the feet for the double tapers. I rotate the template 90 degrees and then mark the other side. Over at the bandsaw, after removing the first taper, I will tape the scrap piece back on to stabilize the foot before removing the second taper. After using the disc sander, I switched over to my block plane to clean up the tapers. After I got the first side looking good, I rotated the foot and then used the block plane to clean up the other side, making sure to get the shoulders to match up. Back over at the table saw, I used the dado stack again to cut the tenons for the aprons. And to cut the mortises for the riser blocks, I went back over to the hollow chisel mortiser to remove that waste. The final pieces of the apron were the two riser blocks and I began using my miter saw to cut those to length. And then one last time back at the table saw I used the dado stack to cut the tenons. The riser blocks have a curve on each end to sort of hide it under the blanket chest so I just grabbed anything round to mark for that. And to remove the waste I went back over to the band saw. Now to clean those up I just used my spindle sander. Before gluing the base up I did sand it to 150 grit and I stopped at 150 because I'm going to be applying a die. I started by gluing up the feet assemblies. Next, I glued the riser blocks to the side aprons and went ahead and put those in the clamps. And then finally, I brought the three pieces together, gluing on the feet assemblies to the aprons. Even though the base is a walnut, I know that it can lighten up over time and I wanted a nice contrasting look, so I dyed the base black. I used 4 ounces of denatured alcohol to 0.2 ounces of a black trans tint dye. Now for the blanket chest and the lid, I sanded it up to 220 grit using my orbital sander because I wanted a nice smooth finish. And then using that 220 grit sandpaper, I eased all the edges. 
The finish on this blanket chest is four coats of a semi-gloss armor seal from General Finishes. Now I was getting a lot of dust in my shop so on the fourth and final coat I did thin that 50-50 with mineral spirits. It made it dry a whole lot faster and less dust actually stuck to the surface. After each coat I sanded it with 320 grit sandpaper, removed the dust with a tack cloth and then applied the next coat. After the fourth coat, I let it set for about a week and then finished sanding the surface using a 2000 grit sandpaper. And then I applied a thin coat of a paste wax, letting it set for 15 minutes and then wiping off the excess with a clean cotton cloth. To install the base, I used six one and a quarter inch screws. I made reference marks, pre-drilled, and then installed the screws. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, this was an awesome build that I'm proud to have in my home and I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you want free plans and free step-by-step -step videos, check out the link in the description below. Uh, leave a comment here on YouTube, hit the thumbs up if you liked it, uh, and just let me know what you think. I uh, appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you in the next build video.